Hello and welcome to News Break at 7. We are coming to you live from Bengaluru. I am Veera Raghav and first our special focus this evening. A week ago, Google announced what it called a revolutionary breakthrough in diagnosis of cardiovascular events. A Google algorithm could use a single eye scan that could predict and hence prevent cardiovascular events or heart ailments. Simply by looking into your eye, the Google algorithm could tell how healthy your heart was. While the medical fraternity was excited, doctors have also advised that it needs to be put through thorough verification before we go forward in it. In simple terms, doctors have often detected several body conditions by looking into the eye and this Google algorithm scans eyes and matches it with matrix, uh, metrics for cardiovascular risk and then correlates it. It's reported to have proved right in 70% of the cases where it was tested. What this does is to make it perhaps easier and less expensive than a long series of tests that are needed to detect a heart condition. Let's listen first to what Sundar Pichai said when he made that announcement and other reactions that came in from India on this. Your same eye scan turns out holds information with which we can predict the five-year risk of you having an adverse cardiovascular event, heart attack or strokes. So to me, the interesting thing is that, you know, more than what doctors could find in these eye scans, the machine learning systems offer newer insights. This could be the basis for a new non-invasive way to detect uh, cardiovascular risk. And we are working, we just published the research, and we are going to be working to bring this to field trials with our partners. So basically, the concept is twofold. The first concept is that there has to be imaging techniques. That means what is called as, the retina is also called as fundus. So we have to take a picture of that and according to the picture that we get which also looks at the blood vessels, the blood vessels which are running in the body are also going to the retina. So this is the only place where you don't have to dissect or do a histopathology but you can observe the blood vessels through a fundus photograph or a camera. So it's like if you see here it will be a machine like this and you can get pictures, uh, you can get pictures there. So you really and these kind of machines will then give a picture and that picture will be processed. This picture after processing by AI will throw up a diagnosis and it will tell you what is the entire situation in the body. So if you have a blood vessel which is narrowing, it's becoming arteriosclerotic or even in cancer cases, leukemia, etc. You can have hemorrhages, etc. So those things can be thrown up. Diabetic retinopathy can also be thrown up. So artificial intelligence, even in India, there is a lot of work that is being going on. Well, you see, this is uh, not the first time that we are hearing about AI in healthcare. Generative AI in healthcare has been something that's been of a trend of late in the last few years. But how does it really change the game? What does it mean for you and me as patients and for doctors as well? We'll be joined by one of India's leading cardiovascular surgeons as well as a technical officer of one of the big companies. But for the moment, we're joined by Tushar Vashist. CEO of Healthy Five Me, who works at the cross section of technology and healthcare to run that uh, business. Tushar, AI in healthcare is not something new. Just take us through why there's so much noise around this and generative AI in healthcare at the moment, and what's the impact it's having on the ground, let's say, in a country like India? I think. You know, generative AI is a whole new technology. It's a new paradigm in artificial intelligence. Uh, that has come about, you know, only in less than about a, a couple of years ago. I think until now we've been playing with, uh, you know, several for several years we've been playing with rudimentary AI, right? Expert systems where you had to train manually, uh, you know, AI models with a, a select sort of specific set of data, um, or, or even some of the, you know, older age models, LSTMs, bag of words, etc. But now with transformers, these are open vocabulary systems that have been trained on you know billions of data points, and that can sort of be far more better than than previous systems to classify results um, and to be able to group them very intelligently. I mean, think of it as if you know it's like an artificially intelligent brain that has billions of neurons that is trained with pretty much the entire human intelligence so far. And therefore, its ability to fine grain, detect, diagnose, understand information is just so much better and, and, and so much more error free than it has ever been before. 
So when you say that, I just want to take that across to uh, Zainul uh, Charbiwala, who's an IIT Mumbai product, uh, spent time in UCLA. He's the chief technology officer and co-founder of Tricog Health. He works very closely with cardiothoracic surgeons as well as far as uh, detecting uh, cardiovascular ailments are concerned and other uh, diseases as well. Uh, Zainul, is a lot of this driven by technology and commercial interest? Does it really change the way, does it imbibe in some ways the temperament that's required uh, from medicine and doctors and from a social point of view? Uh, is there that uh, part of it which is built into these algorithms or these are purely driven by techno geniuses like yourself and perhaps those who work at Google? Um, thanks. Um, you know, I, I think the way that both Google and a lot of us who are building these generative AI models for healthcare are doing it with doctors. Um, doctors are part of every step um, of the way, um, and you know we we uh, we we picked a term called AI plus MD uh, very early on, almost a decade ago, and we've been using both the engineering teams and the medical teams together. Um, in fact, we have just as many doctors. Uh, at the company as we have engineers. So um, this is really a partnership of medicine and AI together, especially on some of these newer uh, AI models that we are seeing that Google has announced. There's many other models that have come out in the last couple of years. Um, I think Google's one is one of the one of the leading ones for um, using fundus cameras, for, uh, you know, to, to get uh, retinal scans and get, you know, what we what are called the third generation, you know, as Tushar mentioned, um, the first generation and second generation were more more LSTM and, and other deep learning based. Now these third generations are cross modality. They are using one modality diagnostics imaging from one modality to actually detect diseases in a completely different modality, like uh, like cardiology. And um, you know, many groups worldwide have been um, getting similar results. So um, I definitely say that this is nothing short of revolutionary. Uh, is this going to is this going to disrupt diagnostics? Uh, definitely not. I think what we are seeing is that we are getting better diagnostic information. We are getting more inexpensive tests um, detect diseases that could otherwise only have been done through far more expensive um, uh, to uh, far more expensive tests and really improving accessibility uh, for for all patients. Uh, Tushar, when it comes to the commercial aspect of these tests uh, and a lot of these aspects that go out in a country like India, uh, what does it mean to a patient? What does it mean economically to a patient, to, to a population or country with a population of our size? Does this really make some tangible difference as we go along? And how are doctors taking it when you approach them with this kind of technology? Well, you know, let me just give you an example of how we did it at Healthify, right? We are we have 35 million Indians today who use our app and uh, our early attempts at healthifying people was by using nutritionists and trainers alone um, and that was an expensive product you know that was a two three thousand rupees a month product even though we were helping our nutritionists with a lot of AI at the back end but in India we had to innovate on building a B2C AI subscription service which we launched about three years ago three or four years ago and and that because it learned from all the data that we had between our nutritionist tra trainers on one side and clients on the other, we could offer at 300 rupees a month. So that was a far more disruptive price point. And, and you know, that allowed us to more than, you know, triple our, our, our being consumer base, allowed a very vastly different set of audience to be able to consume a 70% as good a product at a very low price point. Um, you know, and, and, and so I, I, think, I think there was a classic case of making uh, access possible with artificial intelligence. And mind you, this was not generative AI. With generative AI, you can kind of get to near human-like competence. Uh, while certainly for medical diagnostics, I do think that um, there, is, there is a lot of power in having an expert in the loop, in having a doctor in the loop who looks at that diagnosis and verifies it. But the amount of uh, scans that a doctor could do or the amount of patients a doctor can handle as a result of this could be so much more that it'll drive down the price point and allow for a much right. deeper access to consumers, um, you know, much like it did for us at, at, at a stage in our evolution. Right. Zainul, uh, 
how would you juxtapose this with a country like in the United States? What would be the technological challenges that one would face in a country like India? It, should it be country specific? How does this work uh, really? You know, much of this is algorithms which is fed with data which sort of uh, correlates to find out a condition, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yes. Um, so, uh, the you know, a few things. Uh, the human body is fairly consistent worldwide. Um, that's one. Now, that what, what that means is that you can apply models from the US uh, to India as well. Uh, there are different settings in terms of how the images are taken, you know, the quality of the imaging itself. Um, and I'm talking about just in the case of uh, retinal scans, but uh, for uh, things that we do, for instance, we've been working on uh, electrocardiograms or ECGs for about the last decade. And you know, over the 13 million or so patients that we've uh, we've seen, we've seen very little variance across different countries. So uh, we do think that these models are are um, uh, amenable across the world. Um, again, you know, there are some elements to this that are very specific um, to 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 um, you know race, um, and you can you you can tune the models with the right amount of data to get just that level of performance. Right. Uh, you know, we, we were supposed to have one of India's leading cardiothoracic surgeons, uh, heart transplant specialist on this panel. Unfortunately, he's not able to join in because uh, of some technical issues. So hopefully some CTO like you would, would sort that out for them sometime. But uh, uh, Tushar, uh, when it comes to a country like India, and I go down to this, uh, is there skepticism amongst the medical fraternity? Uh, because doctors, even in this case of Google, has, have advised that it needs to go through a process of thorough verification. You need uh, a, a, a long period of time before all this becomes completely reliable in, in some sense. Uh, as we go forward, what do you think the role of doctors will be when so much of technology is involved in this entire process of diagnostics, and I'm not talking of invasive surgeries or etc., where robotics is largely involved, but in terms of diagnostics, uh, what's really the role ahead for doctors? Will there be more of an overseeing kind of role? And how does the doctor versus AI debate play out in a country like India? Uh, I think, you know, there are two, three aspects to it. I, I do believe fundamentally that with, with generative AI, I think most intellectual and creative tasks that can be done by a human will be, you know, an AI will be able to do them nearly as well, or in some cases even better. Uh, you know, we we know that a, a GPT-4, for example, has already crossed, you know, the US MLE test, the medical fraternity test, the legal tests, et cetera. And on the other hand, you know, 64% of Indians, when uh, given a response generated by AI are, are uh, believe that it is actually a human response. This was a survey done as part of a Turing test done for uh, for India specifically. So I do think that AI is at near human competence or might even be better than human competence in the very near future. But I think it has a very positive and a deep uh, you know, silver lining for markets like India where we need uh, powerful capabilities at low costs. You know, so I think consumers will get access to better advice, be it from a nutritionist or a trainer or a doctor, um, uh, you know, at, at a very cheap price point because Tushar, of these. AI Tushar, I'm, Tushar, I'm sorry, I'm just going to cut you short because we finally have Dr. Sandeep Mishra, Director, Institute of Cardiology at NIMS, uh, who's also joining us live. Thank you so much, Dr. Sandeep Mishra, for joining us. In terms of these uh, technologies that one talks about, so latest is Google saying that it can detect uh, uh, heart ailments through an eye scan. Do you see these as gimmicks or does it really change the way you approach uh, 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 approach medicine and, and how you approach patients and diagnosis diagnostics overall? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think uh, all these advances do add up and uh, they really help in refining Dr. the Mishra? diagnostics. Yeah, so you can hear me well? Can you hear me? able to get through yeah can you hear me well uh, sir doctor dr mishra can you hear me sir yeah i can hear you well can you hear me dr mishra yes yes i can yeah well, I'm I sorry, I, we're not able to get through across to dr mishra i can't hear dr mishra uh, at the moment uh, tushar 
Uh, Tushar, quick point, quick final words from you on what do you see the future to be? Uh, do you really see this advancing at a very rapid pace? Uh, is, there a, uh, uh, is there something really that you can see on the ground which is changing uh, at a dramatic pace where you know, uh, the, the medical fraternity needs to adapt and patients need to be aware of? I think, no, I think uh, we were able to hear Dr. Mishra and I think what he was trying to communicate is the same thing that I would give you is that um, these are very real opportunities. Um, you know, at Healthify, half our subscribers are pure AI subscribers, and this is not even including generative AI. So, and this is allow, but this will allow for huge benefits, um, like, you know, including for the medical fraternity, for the paramedical fraternity to offer their services um, with greater accuracy and with lower right. costs. I'm sorry, Tushar. I, uh, Tushar, I believe you were able to hear him. Uh, you and Zainul were able to hear him, but I wasn't able to hear Dr. Sandeep Misha. Sandeep, Dr. Sandeep Misha, please go ahead. I'm sorry uh, for interrupting you. Yeah. Please go ahead with your thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So what I was saying was that all these advances do add up uh, to the diagnostic capabilities and they improve the diagnostic capabilities. But ultimately, you know, these tests are tests. So they have to be, uh, you know, put in place by uh, human intelligence and they will have to be, you know, figure into the whole algorithm of uh, management, uh, which includes diagnostics, and they can be used to improve the therapy. therapy. But uh, standalone, they cannot, uh, you know, replace a physician or a human intelligence. So they will be a part of uh, the whole diagnostic uh, uh, method, but standalone, they will not replace right. a human intelligence. They will have to be uh, used okay. by the human intelligence, will help guide the human intelligence into better uh, management, which includes right. diagnostics as well as therapy. I think. Um... Right. What do I, as a patient, have to be aware of, sir? Uh, is there something, as a patient, that I need to be very aware of when somebody throws an artificial intelligence tool at me? So, you know, the thing is that, one of once, first of all, this tool has to be verified by, uh, you know, more evidence that uh, this is really, you know, working. And the second thing is context. So, for example, where this tool was developed, whether that population group is equal to your population group, where you are actually uh, looking at the diagnostics. So, for example, you know, uh, if it is for, uh, let us say, 60-year-old people or something like that, then whether that particular uh, group that is addressing this problem it belongs to that uh, group itself or not. So, the context right. where this particular tool is right. developed is very important. So, whether you belong to that contextual right. group or not is, I think, very important to know. If right. I may. Thank you so much, Dr. Sandeep Mishra. We are glad that we could get your perspective. I'm really sorry, Tushar. We've completely run out of time because of that chaotic internet line as well. Uh, Zainul as well. Thank you so much. We'll keep this conversation going. Perhaps we can write about it as well because this is an issue that one needs to keep tracking uh, for many days to come, perhaps many years to come. We'll take a very short break when we come back much more on the show. <laughs>